Hello, you're listening to Abstract AF. I'm Sneha Jaiswal, and in this episode, I'm going to be talking about the graphic memoir, Gender Queer by Maya Kobabe. Now, this book had been on my reading list for a really long time, even before it became controversial and apparently one of the most banned books in American school libraries. So what is the fuss about and is the fuss worth it? First of all, let me tell you about the spivak pronouns, something that I learned only after reading this graphic novel memoir. So the spivak pronouns are e m i r, like she, her, hers. E-M-I-R. This is what the author Maya Kobabe prefers to use. So instead of saying she wrote this book, the right way to go about it would be he wrote this book. Now it's really important to understand that Maya's book is deeply personal. He sets out to explain how confusing growing up was because Maya was never comfortable with identifying either as a boy or a girl. After years of struggling with gender identity, Maya decided that he neither wanted to be a boy or a girl or a trans man or a trans woman. Now, obviously, the book is not going to be relatable to those who haven't had similar experiences, but the beautiful artwork in the book does make it easier to empathize and understand Maya's struggle with gender identity. Now, in a funny coincidence, I was reading this book on a bad cramp day, and menstruation is something Maya strongly complains about. And I'm like, hey, nobody likes to get their period. And turned out that there was a page where Maya talks about how an aunt admonishes her, sort of, saying, you know, nobody really likes to get their periods. The aunt, who identifies as a lesbian, talks about how she sees this trend of genderqueer people as a form of misogyny. She says that genderqueer people are only exhibiting a deeply internalized hatred for women. And obviously Maya Kobabe expresses how deeply hurt Maya was when the aunt said that. But maybe there is some grain of truth to it because which woman in some point in her life has not thought about being a man? Nobody wants all the kind of troubles and the kind of discrimination that comes with being a woman, even in this day and age. Haven't we all at some point in our lives felt alien in our own bodies? If nobody batted an eyelid when men wore shiny sequined tops, loud makeup, and played with pretty dolls, or if women walked around topless just like men in hot summers with unshaved legs, basically if there were no rules as to how a man or a woman should behave, would anybody want to be a different sex? Maybe still yes, but not as many as otherwise. Getting back to Maya Kobabe's graphic novel, The author and creator does a fantastic job of explaining Air's struggle with not being able to associate with a specific gender. The art is bright, colourful and keeps you hooked till the last page. Maya doesn't shy away from sharing intimate moments, so there are a lot of graphic panels and nudity, but they serve as an important part of being able to carry the story forward. It's not like Maya put them there for shock. For example, Maya tells a story about being in third grade. He went on a field trip to the beach from school, and without a thought, Maya removes M shirt like the boys and happily wades into the water, but someone points this out to a teacher, and the teacher then makes Maya cover up. Maya is confused and doesn't understand what the big deal was, but that was very relatable. If girls hadn't been shamed over centuries over public decency, wouldn't we all want to take off a shirt on a bloody hot summer day too? But yes, because of this graphic nudity and some representations pertaining to sex, I do feel like it's not a very appropriate novel for kids that are younger than 14. But school libraries altogether banning this book, that doesn't make sense. It could be up to the librarian to ensure that little kids who haven't even had sex education classes in their school should not be lent this I mean, I remember when I was in school, Dracula by Bram Stoker was off limits for kids who were younger than 13. And I honestly don't know what's inappropriate about Dracula, but well, that was it. It's not like it wasn't there on the school shelves, it just wasn't meant for younger students. Genderqueer is an interesting study in just how deeply human interactions are entwined with gender roles. At different points of our life, Maya keeps having different confusion, constantly trying to read more to understand how to define air identity. Luckily for Maya, Maya had a very supportive family who never imposed any sort of gender roles on him. For any teen who's struggling with similar problems, 
this book would be a great guide to understand themselves. This was a very interesting book for me to read and I would rate it a 4 on 5. If you are 14 and over and don't really understand what gender queer means, this is a great book to start. That's all for this episode. Talk to you in the next one.